Life has a way of unfolding in seasons, a dynamic journey with different interests and hobbies, changing friend groups, and evolving sources of inspiration. And while you're in a particular season, it can feel impossible to imagine a life any other way. I try not to overthink it, and instead take the fullest advantage of the current season that I'm in. In this season of my life, I'm drawn to being outside on a bike, exploring nature. I want to test my physical and mental limits. I feel like I have something to prove to myself. And for me, nothing could epitomize this experience more than bikepacking the Arizona Trail, something that I've dreamt about for the last several years after watching someone strap their bike to their back and begin their descent down the north rim of the Grand Canyon. An 800 mile trail traversing across a diverse Arizona landscape with expansive vistas and amber colored skies, towering saguaro cacti and prickly plants, <clears throat> bone chilling pine tree forests, and the Grand Canyon, a geological masterpiece. For my last bikepacking trip of 2023, the Arizona Trail 800, a route that lives up to its reputation. All right, so we just rode to the monument. There it is. This is the official start of the ride. So uh, it's a great temperature out, actually. I mean, it could be a little bit cooler, but I mean, what do you want? We're in Arizona right now, so. Mexico. <laughs> yeah, just I know. <laughs> We're in freaking Mexico. But uh, it's pretty pleasant. Just did a little rearranging. There's a little rattling going on, but I think we're ready to get started proper now. Yeah, sounds good, Chris. All right. So I started this trip thinking that I'd be riding solo. In fact, I really thought that I wanted it this way. Somehow in this equation of proving something to myself, doing it alone was a key ingredient. But I was sharing this shuttle with a guy named Gordon, and as we were getting our bikes ready to go, I started to talk to him about riding together. In that moment, I immediately regretted it. Like, imagine an awkward blind date. In my head, I'm thinking, Sure, I guess I'll try it. It could be nice to have company, but what if he's really fast? That vest he's wearing, he looks like he's gonna be fast. Also, I'm filming. It's so annoying. This isn't gonna work. Also, what if I just don't get along with him, or he's a psycho? Maybe he'll think I'm the psycho. Yeah, this definitely won't last. First AZT gate. We roll through the undulating <laughs> hills of Southern Arizona together, sharing intimate details of our lives back home. It's amazing, when you meet a stranger, how quickly you can open up, tell them some pretty deep and vulnerable shit. Like, you may never see this person again, so who cares? And before I know it, it feels like I'm oversharing. Yikes, maybe I'm the psycho. The sun starts to set, and we're knackered. We agreed, it was probably time to set up camp. I had fun riding with Gordon today, and so far, not a psycho. Nice work today, dude. <laughs> nice work, Chris. All right, it says 35 miles, 3,200 feet of gain, 4,200 feet of descent. Average speed, 7.8 miles. I got 3,700 ascent. Oh, I like that number Let's better. Let's take it. <laughs> it's good enough to me. <laughs> I agree, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> You're all sorted already. <laughs> You're almost ready to eat. Yeah. What my friend Neil says about me. Fast on a bike, slower on the house. <laughs> Fast on a bike, slower on the house? Oh. <laughs> slower around the house. Slow around the house. Yeah, I'm always like cracking in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> air mattresses, you don't really need much air in them, eh? Yeah. <laughs> like mine's almost empty right now, but it was... I know, mine's <laughs> like... I slept like a pig. <laughs> Day two on the Arizona Trail. Gordon and I have such a long way to go. It's almost hard to fathom. As we start to pedal, we're trying not to think beyond today. Instead, where's the next food and water resupply? Where might we sleep tonight? Out here, the miles come slow under the scorching sun. So where are we going after this? I don't know. So we're at Canelo Pass Trailhead, you said? Are we going to Kentucky from here? Alright, so we decided to 
take the legacy section of the Arizona Trail to get into Patagonia and the trail is not really here anymore. Hmm. Tarmac, woo! Oh yeah, look at those salt stains right there. That was a bar fight. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. All right, so we just got off the trail here. We're on some tarmac heading towards Patagonia where cool. we're on the hunt for some burritos. It's hot today, like a hundred degrees hot. So the shade break in Patagonia is welcome but the sun is draining every ounce of my energy. I'm struggling. It is 3.03, pulled over on the side of the trail, in some shade, kind of having a little moment here. I told uh, Gordon to just keep on heading down the trail without me, I don't want to hold him up. He's just going a lot faster. I was trying to keep up. And it was spiking my heart rate. I'm gonna take a little 15 minute break here, just kind of lay down. Wanted to make it to uh, Kentucky camp tonight, which honestly, it's like, feels like it shouldn't be that far, but I'm just too tired, man. I'm gonna set up camp here tonight. I'm probably like six miles from Kentucky camp. Um, and I hope tomorrow I'll get up early and I'll be able to catch Gordon again. All right, it is about 4.45. Kind of up, so I figured I should start packing and get moving instead of just rolling around. Well, I didn't make it very far. I made it like 20 feet, and then I realized that my tire's flat. Starting with a flat tire. <laughs> Morale's low. This isn't helping. It's only day three. I'm already haunted by the fear of failure. I may have underestimated this route. All right, I've been riding for about an hour and 10 minutes. Gone about five miles, so just a little bit of climbing, a little bit of descent. Got a beautiful sunset behind me, sunrise rather. I think uh, waking up real early is the ticket. It's gonna be hot today, I can already feel it. I get to Kentucky camp and I see a guy smoking a cigarette outside the cabin. I ask him if he's seen a Canadian guy on a bike and he tells me, yeah, he just took off a few minutes ago. I'm laughing on the inside about what Gordon told me the other night. Fast on a bike, slow around the house. This means that maybe I'll be able to catch Gordon. Instead of finding the proper water spigot, I just work quickly to wash the crusted salt off my body and refill my bottles with the warm hose water, a decision I'll regret for the next eight hours. All right, it is 11.36. Met back up with Gordon. Woo. Sitting here in some shade because it's hot out. Uh, so we we're just thinking about where we want to go to like resupply. We've got Vale as an option, and then there's Suarita as an option, and there's like this little place in between, but they're all like 20 miles away. I'm happy to be reunited with Gordon. We find a place just off the route to get some burritos, and we lounge for an hour or two while the sun sets. We ride into the night when the temperature's more reasonable and set up camp in the dark. All right, it is 6.10. Gordon and I are at the Dave Zimmerman Canyon Trailhead. Morning, y'all. We've got an earlier start today, like 5.30, I think we started riding. Yeah. Feels good out. And for me. Yeah, we're, uh, this is like downhill, so we're cruising. It was like the er easiest miles we've had so far, it feels like. So we're gonna be coming up to Saguaro National Park here pretty soon. We don't go through it. We do like a little side detour. And I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna get hot. That's what's gonna happen. It's gonna get hot. It's gonna get hot. That's one thing I do Fireballs know. Coming <laughs> for it. So we're just coming up to the boundary of Saguaro National Park, and so we deviate from the AZT for a little bit. Made it to Rock and K. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Stoked. All right, in a turn of events, we are now waiting out in the rain. <laughs> and Gordon doesn't have a rain jacket. Ah! I have a raincoat. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully this is gonna stop soon, but it's actually coming down pretty good. All 
right, that was the entrance of the Saguaro National Park. We are not gonna go in there. And you can see now, it's real sunny out. No more rain. It's feeling hot again. All right, we took a little detour to this uh, learning center. The people in here were very hospitable. Re-upped on some water, looked at some endangered fish. You're heading up Reddington Pass. It's 2.30, literally the hottest part of the day. Nice work. Slow and steady. Too hot to go fast. Gordon, two-time Arizona State mountain bike champion. What the heck? And I'm trying to keep up with this guy? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. Today I learned that Gordon is a two-time Arizona mountain bike champion. No wonder he's been kicking my ass this entire trip. Yeah, we're at Reddington Road. All right, so we're stoked to be here. We're gonna find a place to set up tents. It's a little bit slanted, I don't know. There might be a better spot. All right, it is 5.55. It was up at 4.30. Gordon's tweaking over here. He's uh, He hasn't even eaten his breakfast yet. He's just been screwing around all morning. Leave I don't know what alone. he's doing. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be like 112 degrees in like two hours. Slow around the house, fast on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much air in here still. Angry, I'm an angry camper. Took off before Gordon, he was still needing to eat his breakfast and we're just way slower than him, so here's a look at the terrain. It's gonna be slow moving today. Look who finally finished breakfast! <laughs> Good ride. <laughs> oh, that was the early morning race. <laughs> I I was in a funk. This is Molino Basin. This is where shit got real. Yeah. There's gonna be a lot of hike a bike coming up. Steep hike a bike. This upcoming section of hike a bike is called the Lemon Push. It's exposed, steep, and follows the official Push Wilderness Bypass of Mount Lemon. It's mostly unrideable, and it's one of the route's most physically and mentally demanding stretches. All right, we just rolled up to General Hitchcock Highway. We found this picnic area. There's a tarmac road that leads up to Summerhaven. It's 19 miles. That is not the way that we're gonna be going up to Summerhaven though. Yeah, so it's gonna be a long, hot push, I think, up to Summerhaven from here. All right, it's 3.40. What's going on, Gordon? <laughs> Wrecked. Wrecked. We got so much more to go. Yes, we do. It's just been hike a bike. Like, we knew. We knew what it was gonna be. But it's just like really steep hike a bike. Like you're lifting your bike over some big stuff. Abby hooked us up with peanut butter, and bagels and water. That was Bacons. great. And pecans. So there's a Mount Bigelow trailhead and there's a water spigot there, which would be awesome. It's like five miles away. Good luck, Chris. <laughs> Good luck to you, Gordon. I need <laughs> luck, yeah. I think Mount Lemon and Summerhaven over there on the other side of that hill. We still have like, oh my gosh, 2,200 feet, 3.7 miles. That's a lot. I don't know what's happening with Gordon right now. It's kind of a this burned area, there's some steep sections. He doesn't have a dropper. A little sketchy. I thought I'd lower my seat before I die. Oh gosh, is that why you got your tool out? Yeah. I was just telling the camera. 
you high don't have a dropper. High post. <laughs> so scary. Oh my god. I can get her down an inch. I think. If only you were a previous Arizona state champion. And with high post, I didn't have dropper. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> This is what we're dealing with. Oh. All right, we have pulled into showers, campground somewhere. I don't know. We were on a quest for water and we were tweaking. We couldn't find a spot. We were like just roaming around trying to find water. So in the dark, in the dark we were knackered. Good work today though, Gordon. That was a hard day, oh, man. Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> Gordon was tweaking at camp, so I left without him. I told him I'd meet him in Summer Haven. That's my hiker bike. Beautiful sunrise behind me. All right, I'm cruising down Mount Bigelow Road, reflecting a little bit on yesterday. Gosh, that was some hard hike a bike. It's nice to be cruising downhill on a smooth road right now. See if they have breakfast here. I told Gordon I'd meet him at Lemon. The general market across the street's closed. Alright, they're serving breakfast. Dude, it's a trip in there. <laughs> so fancy. Got funny music playing. But uh, yeah, they have breakfast, so hopefully Gordon hurries the fuck up. And we can go get some breakfast! How'd you like that ride this morning, Gordon? Great. Yeah, there was a couple spots where I was like, no ooh, fall zones. high posting, no fall zones for sure, yeah. Cliffs, man. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. Like my ski. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. So good. So I use my sealant and I can get some here. <laughs> That's just good. Right. Going crazy, look, he's getting more. What the heck? This is hitting buttons. Mm. That's kind of cool they have this, actually. You ready to get radical, Gordon? On Red Ridge? Radical bra. Radical bra. Pretty steep. A little hand pump going on there. Oh. <laughs> it just doesn't quit. It's just, I just want to ride my bike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stressed out all yeah. the time. <laughs> ah. All right, we just got down Red Ridge here. Gordon, what'd you think? It's sketchy. How is it with uh, without a dropper? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like almost doing a handstand the whole way. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, now we're headed back up to, I guess, Dan Saddle or something. I don't know. We have about 2,000 feet now that we have to climb back up. And then we'll be rewarded with another descent. Woo! I reckon we can make it work in a pinch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Look at this. A stove, wood stove. All right, we've been working on this hill for a couple hours, 2,000 feet. We have about 300 left. That's a hell of a ridge. Yeah. Man, this road sucks. It's so chunky. Of course. It looks like it smooths out down here, though. Rock blew right up. Derailleur in the spoke. That's never happened before. It's like stuck in there. And this is like almost pulling out. And that's not looking too good either. I don't know what else yep. to do. I'm cutting my spoke thanks to this baby head infested white knuckle shit descent. No, I didn't need to. I just panicked in the moment. That's some MacGyver shit for sure. Okay. I think I'm good though. All right, we just stopped at the Oracle Patio 
cafe and market. The cafe is closed, but the market is open. And man, this is a great little market. We met Bo, who works here, and he was really nice. Um, so got some really tasty looking food. Probably gonna eat something here, and then uh, head back to the AZT, ride in the night, and uh, find a place to post up. All right, it's like day 40 and we're still in Tucson. Getting our asses kicked. Get any Choya? I'm getting good. I can take my fork out. If yeah. Pull it off my leg and keep on riding. All right, we've like entered the land of the Choya. Check it out. There's Choyas everywhere. It's on the trail. What happens is when you're riding, it kicks up and then it sticks to the back of your calves. My calves happen to have a pretty big surface area. That's what I was looking at. <laughs> See, Gordon's got the comb. Pro move. That ain't to brush his, his uh, wavy locks, folks. That's for... <laughs> Keep it in there, <laughs> Time's starting to slip away and the days meld together. We're beginning to acclimate to the scorching heat. We hardly flinch at the cat claws that tears at our flesh. Almost a week in, I feel like Gordon and I are finally starting to find our rhythm. Just riding through the desert. We're on some uh, dirt road now though, and it's like, Heaven. it's flat, it's smooth. Freeman. We're in Freeman, we just pulled up. There's a water box over there. Got a little freaked out. There's only one gallon in there. And so there's this water tank. We're gonna check that out. So let's hope there's water in the rain collector. Yes. Speak it right there. Stoked. Look at this. Got air conditioning. Go. We're at a hotel in Kearney. And if you've done your research on this section of the Arizona Trail, you've probably heard of old time pizza. And likely, you've heard of this guy named Gary. Some people affectionately refer to him as the King of Kearney. His daughter now runs Old Time Pizza. And Gary's a guy that likes to help out people on the Arizona Trail. He drove to the trailhead with a truck and picked Gordon and I up. Then when he arrived, he checked the water box to make sure it was full and drove us into Kearney. Thanks, Gary. You're truly the king of Kearney. Uh, there's a pizza place. We can actually get pizza and bring it back here. It's uh, Gordon and my one week anniversary today. So we <laughs> splurged and got the room. Maybe we'll, bring, maybe we'll bring dinner back to the motel tonight. <laughs> All right, good old Gary from uh, Kearney. He just dropped us back off where he picked us up yesterday. Amazing. So we're about to get started on the picket post trail. We're at the AZT low point, 1,646 feet elevation next to the Gila River. And we're about to climb 3,100 feet up a uh, picket post. Gordon's got all kinds of shit in his tire. There, look at that. Ooh, that's, that is a big one actually. Gordon, what do you think of that? Water. 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 Again. Water. So we got like 500 feet of climbing left once we get, hopefully there's water here. Okay, one one quarter mile. I'm praying to the baby Jesus. Woo! Fucking water! <laughs> These trips have a way of giving oh you appreciation for the most <laughs> fundamental of comforts. Shade, water, and a few moments of being still. All right, so we just had a big old siesta here at the Arizona Trail water collector on Picket Post Trail. This was a great little spot until the ants came and started crawling all over us while we were like trying to nap. All right, so we're starting the Picket Post descent. And just like everything else, like you climb up all day in the burning heat, you're like, sweet, we're gonna have some fun on the downhill. And it just like beats you up still, right? It's like thankless. It's relentless. Yeah. Full of cat claws. Like, Gordon, he's got all blood over. all over. <laughs> yeah, you're just like going down this hill and you're just like schwacking all this sharp stuff along the way. 
and it's like impossible to avoid. Nothing comes easy out here is the moral. <laughs> Even the descents like just have a way of punishing you more. <laughs> All right, we're having a little situation here. I freaking stopped on the trail because of a bird and then fell into a cactus. And then Gordon got a rim strike and now he's got a puncture. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're adding more sealant. All right, we're at the picket post trailhead. Uh, there's some guys that are meeting the AZT 300 finishers out here. Steve and Max, so yesterday we got some burgers and some asada tacos, um, some Gatorade, it was great. All right, so we're at the picket post trailhead with Steve and Max. They've been awesome, hooking us up with some food. Uh, they've got given us drinks and they're gonna have food for the AZT 300 finishers. Uh, how's that working out? Well, we're only gonna have a few of them, but we're just gonna be here to, you know, even if it was one person, it wouldn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, even if it's one person. But we'll also hit like hikers that come through, yeah. backpackers, whoever. So awesome. Yeah. 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 So great. And Max is a crusher. He's done, he's done this trail three times. Yeah, well, three completions. Three completions. <laughs> Crazy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Gordon and I are stoked. Pancakes for breakfast, coffee from Steve, so. Thanks guys, I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Good Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck on your adventure. Yeah. It's a war zone out here. Look at all this dust. There's guns going off everywhere. It's out of control. Welcome to America. Alright, so we're here with uh, Gordon's buddy Mark and he saved the day for us. Mesa. Yeah. He uh, got us some new tires, sealant, like noon, all kinds of shit. Trail angel, another yeah. trail angel. Pretty much, so huge shout out to Mark. So awesome. Thanks so much, man. We really appreciate it. It is 715 and we are riding in the superstitions. We're on the Jacob Crosscut Trail. Hoping there's water and food and coffee. We'll see. We're at Saguaro Lake Marina. We've got some time to kill before the restaurant opens. We're meeting Gordon's brother Jay for lunch. And luckily, a waitress named Stephanie seats us and brings us coffee, water, and orange juice before the restaurant opens. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. You were awesome. All right, we just spent way too long at this restaurant. But uh, it was cool to meet Gordon's brother yeah, and his true. buddy Mark, and they were really generous, got our lunch. We had an awesome waitress. Unbelievable. Stephanie hooked us up with so much water. And so now we're gonna jump into Saguaro Lake while we're here, and then we'll finally start our giant hill climb, <laughs> so. What just happened? Trying to money in the street. <laughs> what the heck? 20 bucks! Money, Chris. Holy cow. <laughs> Alright, we're doing a scavenger hunt for more. More money, there's gotta be more. <laughs> Alright, it's like day 200. Gordon and I are cruising up to the Four Peaks wilderness. See the Four Peaks? So we got a couple of climbs. Feels like we're making good time. Stoked. Four Peaks Wilderness was one of my favorite sections of the entire Arizona Trail. It's where the temperature started to shift. We weren't constantly on the brink of heat exhaustion anymore. An untamed wilderness with sprawling desert landscapes mixed with towering summits. It was beautiful. And for the first time on the trip, I didn't feel like I was fighting for every mile. So here's in the spring. That water actually looks reasonable, but... There's another spring called Pigeon Spring up a little higher, just 1,300 feet. I'm climbing like three miles still to get there. All right, well, we're calling it right here. Great view from our campsite tonight. 
right next to the road, but I don't think we're gonna see a lot of traffic on this road. We haven't seen one car since we got on this road. Yeah. Sure. Good work today, dude. Good work. Mark. Fucking <laughs> boots <laughs> on. That light down there is one of the bike packers. I think that's someone in number two position. Watch this. It's probably full of shit. Straight out of bed. Yeah. Kind of about nine miles. I thought it was all downhill for I know. And then my Garmin keeps saying, oh, a 400 foot hill. That's 200 foot hill. 400 foot hill. But look at these clouds. Oh my gosh. It's like someone turned on the AC for us. Well, good. So all right. Did you enjoy it? Why are you planning, uh, hoping to arrive today? Uh, we don't know. Have you just been Jake, sleeping? I said, Jake said we could. Yeah. Get there. Did you get in the rain yesterday? Yeah. It's a little sprinkle. Okay. That's bad. Okay. I, I could see it and I decided to stop before. Yeah. I think it was a good decision. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, well, great, great, great luck on your hey, race, man. All right, we're at Sycamore Creek and the water is flowing. I have my GoPro back because Alexandra found it. <laughs> Alexandra found my fucking GoPro. What? <laughs> that's so cool. I was like, I wonder who this is. <laughs> no racer would carry that. That's right. <laughs> Gordon's calling me Mark. Everything's back to normal. After a lot of climbing today, we're trying to beat the sunset and make it to Jake's Corner. We're riding along this gold ridge trail, beautiful single track with views of the Mazatzal wilderness and the Mogollon Rim in the distance. The trail starts out smooth, flowy, and fun, but it quickly turns steep. Like steep enough that I decide I'm going to walk my bike, which is challenging in and of itself. We're meeting up with a few of Gordon's friends at Jake's Corner. They also totally hooked it up with pizza, chipotle, snacks, and water. Thanks, Betty and Kelly. I wanna hear your little rant again, Gordon. What's happening? The light's on inside my bike. Turns out I just have a slow leak and sad bladder. Rain jacket's got no zipper on it. What? Apparently the zipper fell off. And I thought I was leaking tuna juice all over <laughs> me. I didn't have a coffee yesterday. That was a terrible experience. Yeah. I don't wanna live through that again. <laughs> Our first stop here, Today is gonna to be Payson, so hopefully around lunchtime we'll get there. Right on in all day. Look at that. Okay, Gordon and I just finished eating the most giant breakfast ever. <laughs> How are you today? I'm well, you. Happy, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy too. I need a nap, but instead we're gonna to ride to Pine. <laughs> Gordon found us this Airbnb, and so here we are. We just pulled in, and now the tweaking will commence. <laughs> There's gonna be an explosion in here. Look at this, what the heck? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Dot, successfully applied. Yeah. <laughs> Gordon and I got a taste of the good life at the Airbnb last night, and we're gonna be heading down into La Pine, or Pine, and then we'll keep on riding uh, with the goal of getting up the Mogollon Rim today. It's gonna be a big day. I think it's gonna be hard, uh, mostly on single track. All right, riding on the Highline Trail. This single track here is so smooth and beautiful, and it's just the perfect temperature. I'm stoked to be out here. This is a really nice section of uh, the trail. Heading up the Mogion Rim. Gordon is an animal. 
I've just been like pushing my bike up this hill. Look at what Gordon does. <laughs> what do you think of that? Oh, it's so rough. That's crazy. Fire. Yeah. Mad Max in there. <laughs> We're headed to the ranger station to get some water. Oh my God, we're in. <laughs> we uh, filled up at the ranger station with water. The ranger there kind of freaked us out. She's like, it's gonna be 17 degrees. Yeah, for a high. <laughs> but she said that was on Sunday. Today's Thursday, we're getting the hell out of here. But we're heading north and we're going up in elevation. See, that didn't really click for me. I'm thinking Celsius, and I'm yeah. thinking that's a beautiful summer day. No. Canada. No. Freezing. What? Or f No. I don't know. She's tweaking. She's tweaking. She's tweaking. We've moved past being too hot, and now we have moved on to being too cold. <laughs> Got like all my clothes on. The Happy Jack section is notoriously bumpy and slow, and it leads us to the Mormon Lake Lodge. Fresh water from the Mormon Lake Lodge. The next like milestone or the next like point of interest is probably like 15 miles. There's not very much climbing. It's like 800 feet or something. We're uh, riding through more burned area. There's still some areas that are smoking. Five eighteen. We just got to the Marshall Wilderness Camp area. Uh, we put in our longest day mileage wise and did about 61 or 62 miles, uh, which is good. And so now we're gonna post up here. We got this full moon and uh, there's lots of flat area for us to set up camp here. It's only 4,000 feet. <laughs> twist method. Okay. <laughs> uh, Gordon and I are just got into Flagstaff, and look who we ran into. What's up? What's up, bro? Can't believe you guys are out here. We're yeah. just passing through. I had no idea. What are you guys doing? Yeah, bro. We're doing the AZT. Where's your bike, bro? Want to join us? Oh, so we just happen to have a lot of things that you might be interested in. Oh, I'm interested. We stopped, we yeah. stopped at the grocery store, bought them a whole bunch of stuff I thought they would want. And uh, we're going to let them go from here. And we're going to meet them at the south room of the Grand Canyon. But it doesn't count now because <laughs> I got support, didn't I? Oh, and I got emotional support. Oh, oh I'm wishing my cushy. I'm wishing. So Parker and Calth are going to do rim to rim with us, and they're going to be camping at the north rim, and then they're going to hike back the next day. So rim, rim to rim, rim to rim. 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 Yeah. What's up? Tweakers, tweakers will tweak. tweak. Tweakers must tweak. <laughs> tweakers are going to tweak. Yes. Okay, guys, have fun. <laughs> Don't leave! Don't leave! I want to go! I want to go! I can't run anymore! Oh god! I'm out of breath. Okay. After we get our resupply from Rob and Ember, we tackle a big climb up Humphreys Peak. It's frigid out, and we ride into the night and try to lose some elevation in hopes for a warmer camp. It's 7:12. We uh, descended from Humphreys area, which is like 9,000 feet. And we're now camped probably at about 8,000. Hey, it was freaking freezing last night. And so Gordon and I are just chilling in our tents right now, waiting for it to heat up a little bit before we start riding. Um, the next real resupply is Tucson, and we're probably not gonna make it there because that's like a 70 mile day. All right, it is 5.41, it's fucking freezing out. It says we've gone 61 miles, 29, 23 ascent. We're trying to make it to Tucson, and we're uh, putting on our lights because we're gonna need them. We're getting to Tucson one way or the other. 
Gordon and I just had a big day, oh. and now we are at a pasta place, and we're still all batteries are dead. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get a hotel here. So happy. Gordon and I are at the GC. We've made it to the Grand Canyon. Woo! -hoo. Woo! Gordon had a little package here that has his supplies for carrying across the bike. Uh, the bike across the Grand Canyon. Look, that's all it is. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're crazy! Oh, see, we got we got our shirt off now. It's getting hot. Yeah. It's hot in here. Getting, he's getting all packed up. These guys yeah, are getting tweaking. their bikes ready to cross the Grand Canyon. Look, he's taking his shirt off. <laughs> <hard. laughs> oh. They gotta get all this shit in a pack on their back. Good job. Yeah. You guys impressed? That pack, that pack weighs was, two pounds, right? <laughs> I was a doubter. You were I a was, doubter. I, I don't know. I'm still kind of, <laughs> I'm still kind of <laughs> doubting it. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 Can't wait to watch you guys suffer with those bikes on your back. <laughs> <laughs> Lacking the dexterity with these gloves. You strong, Wilson. Oh. We haven't even got to the trailhead, and I'm tired. <laughs> Are you ready to rumble? How are we doing? Well, so far it ain't going too terrible. <laughs> I think you guys are making good time. Yeah? Yeah. Gordon, go! Go, Gordon, go! Go fast! <laughs> How are you guys doing? Oh my god. Eat a piece of cake. <laughs> Don't have a bike on it. <laughs> no, we're not carrying bicycles. It's so cool here. It's so cool. What a great morning. You guys picked a perfect day to do this. Planned it perfectly. No planning involved. <laughs> <laughs> Rather be lucky than good. <laughs> hey, stops right in the fucking shot. How are you feeling? Good. Going up is going to be different. The frustration. The, str the struggle is real. The struggle is very real. Yeah, all right. <gasps> that looks heavy. It's heavy. It got heavier yeah. somehow. Gordon and I have finally reached the last boss, and we're heading into the belly of the beast. Here's our little Sherpa. We start at the Bright Angel Trailhead around 5 a.m. And usually people doing the AZT start at the South Kaibab Trailhead. It just made more logistical sense this way since we wanted to hike with Rob and Ember. The downside is this adds several miles to the hike. The weather is perfect. I'm so happy to be doing this with Gordon, Rob, and Ember. By the way, carrying your bike on your backpack with all your kit, it's about as uncomfortable as it looks. I don't think there's a way to make it not kind of suck. It feels kind of surreal to finally be down here. I'm thinking back to years ago when I watched someone else strap their bike to their backpack on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. I watched in amazement and envy as they descended into the canyon. I was struck. I remember thinking, I hope one day that I'll have the courage, the will, and dedication to do this. Like, in that moment, that guy was my hero. And as time went by, fear began to gnaw at me. That doing the Arizona Trail would only be a dream or something that I'd talk about one day doing. It's cliche to say, but I convinced myself the only thing worse than failing would be not even trying. And now, as Gordon and I trudged through the canyon, some of the people we stop and talk to react like we're some kind of heroes. I know I'm not, but it feels good to be on the other side of the conversation for once. We're moving slow, and it's totally kicking our ass. Part of me doesn't want this to end, because after the Grand Canyon, it feels like we're basically done. It's the first time that I have real confidence that Gordon and I will make it to Utah. You're motoring. Trying to. Feeling good? No. <laughs> Got this fucking pedal in my back. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh. Huh. I'm doing okay. 
hanging in there. Just gotta stay motivated, you know? Yep. There's Gordon. How you doing, Parker? <laughs> stay at the park for me, literally. Damn it! The National Park. <laughs> I just got an overnight bag, no big deal. Woo. I ain't packing everything on my and my bike. Yeah. You found your niche. What's that? Carrying heavy loads up mountains. <laughs> I don't think that's my niche. And if it is my niche, fuck that. I need to find a new niche. Yeah, I think we're gonna ditch you. Yeah. Slow, just cause I wanna see everything. Take yeah. pictures. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 for the art. Right, yep. For the art. I really like the night photography out okay. here, so. <laughs> we're gonna get some. <laughs> Boy. Five miles left, Gordon. Five. Five. Uh. These last miles are such a struggle. It feels like it's never gonna end. And Gordon, he's hiking to the moon. I swear, Gordon. <laughs> Gordon and I started hiking at five this morning. And it is 10, 12 at night. And we just made it to the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Gordon! You're a fucking champion, dude. Oh, fuck. Oh. I can't believe it. Now what? I don't know. Sit down. Just sit down for a second. World, this is the toughest man in the world. <laughs> this guy. Packed that bike across the Grand Canyon, and I left him for Some dead. Golf bags, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> no. I left him for dead at six and a half miles yeah. to go. You left oh, me. I did. There was nothing I could do for you. Gord, see the moon? Right next to the moon. <laughs> that lodge there? That's where you need to go. That's where you need to go. How was your little ascent last night, bro? It was hard. <laughs> You've done this before. I've done it before. I thought it was easy. <laughs> Don't underestimate the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Yeah. So we left you guys for dead and then we hiked six and a half miles. And by the time we were getting to the top, it was cold and windy and dark. And I had a belly ache. Oh no. And then we got it and Ember was clutch, dude. She, Ember's she did clutch. the navigation here. She got us here. She went and got the water. She put our food in the box. She found the toilet. It was pitch black. I was done. She <laughs> Dude, Cal's the MVP. She is. She's the MVP. <laughs> One push. I thought Gordon was just gonna be like, you know, the dude in the desert when they run out of water and they just, I they just go. I <laughs> was the guy on the poster that says, "Do not go to the bottom." And <laughs> I was the guy. <laughs> Bent over. <laughs> oh my god. We spend some time together in the morning, enjoying the views and the quiet at the North Rim. There's literally no one else here. <laughs> this morning, Rob and Ember will be heading back down the Grand Canyon. And Gordon and I, we're hoping to make it to Jacob's Lake. You need a hand? For years, I've been asking him to help me with this. <laughs> and you know what he does? He films me struggling, because he thinks that's funny. Yeah. But he meets a whole new, Parker's replacing it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, how's it going there, Parker? Every day. Dude. Got that folded into every three. Day. Kind of a pain oh, in that tight oh, yeah. space, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and then it kind of comes undone on the end. Parker's pretty funny. Yeah. All right, we just refilled our water at this refill station at the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Got about, I don't know, 80 miles left. All right, so we're just getting back to rejoin the ADT, and look who we run into! Some champions! Johnny and Alexandra, congratulations, breaking records! Yes. I went faster than I did last Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, these guys are so awesome and inspirational. <laughs> so, and, look, their bikes are packed up, because they're going to walk down the fucking canyon again. <laughs> Psychos! Yeah, yeah. A little crazy. Yeah. I'm so glad so I found cool. your GoPro. That I was so sick. <laughs> and right on the other side of this ridge, you can see smoke. There's a fire burning. You can see the flames when we were down there, and we were like, I hope we're not riding into that.
Hello. This is gonna be our last day on the Arizona Trail. Last time breaking down camp. Last time Gordon has to set up this shitty tent. Oh, shit. <laughs> Setting up this tent was almost as much struggle as the whole trip. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get packed up and then there's a restaurant like right there. You can almost see it. And we're gonna get some breakfast. And then we have a 23 mile day. How's it looking, Gordon? Three miles left all downhill. Don't even have to pedal. Don't have to pedal. Just <laughs> hike a bike up some more hills. Pushing up some rock oh, ledges. Oh, gosh, no. Lifting yeah. my bike. Yeah, Cat Claw, Choya. Don't believe what you read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta experience it for yourself. Three Drink enough to shoot bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this is the last push right here. The last push up some rocks right here. Oh, he's gonna do it in style. <laughs> Woo! On November 2nd, 2023, Gordon and I reached the northern terminus of the Arizona Trail. Reaching this end is a bit anticlimactic, and in the moment, I'm having a hard time feeling the gravity of what this accomplishment means to me. I'm feeling a mixture of emotions too. My legs are exhausted, but there's part of me that doesn't want this to end. It feels so bittersweet. We've got a few hours to sit around as I wait for Rob and Ember to pick me up and Betty to pick up Gordon. As we wait, the reality sets in. This could be the last time that I ever see Gordon. I hope not. Part of the reason I said I wanted to do this ride was to prove something to myself. How bad do I really want it? Am I a person who can deal with discomfort and fear? Am I really willing to put in the effort? Do I even know what it means to put in the effort? Well, I did it, and I still ask myself these questions. And truthfully, I'm okay with that. So for now, I'll set my sights on a new goal and ask myself the same questions and give it a try. And Gordon, if you're watching this, thanks again for being an awesome writing partner. I hope we can do it again sometime. All right, Gordon, you just finished the AZT 800. What would you tell somebody who wants to do this? What would I tell someone who wants to? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you better like struggling. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it doesn't come easy. It's yeah? a tough trail. There's nothing easy about it. There's no easy days. Yeah. Especially with the heat, the cold, the lifting, the pushing, the walking, the cat claw, <laughs> the limited water, limited food. The tweaking, <laughs> <laughs> the endless tweaking on the trip. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about efficiency. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay. I don't know if there's anything you can do to get ready for it. <laughs> yeah. You just gotta suffer through and uh, uh, be patient every day, be patient day by day. <laughs>